Um, in, for those that who are not quite aware of how different China digital landscape um, it is compared to what we have cur currently in the West, um, this is a brief introduction um, about how different it is. So in China, because of the existence of the firewall, um, we have an equivalent of everything of what we have currently now in the West. So for search, um, for example, we have Google here, but in China we have Baidu. For social network, instead of Facebook, we have WeChat, so Weixin. Um, compared to YouTube, we have Youku here. Compared to eBay, we have Taobao and Timo. Um, and for Twitter, we have equivalents of Weibo. So when you go to China, you will see um, not a lot of well-known Western um, media channels, especially digital channels in China. But what you can see is their equivalence. And this is to introduce you, um, Tencent and, and Alibaba and Baidu um, actually lead these two platforms. Um, so for example, for um, Alibaba, they, have, they are very strong in e-commerce and also they are very strong um, also in um, payment system as well, because they are the owner of the Taobao and Tmall. For Tencent, it's number one social media in China because it owns um, WeChat and it's number four in the digital of the world. Uh, for, for Baidu, it's very strong in search and it's also very strong in maps, so navigation world. Um, why is it important for us to understand that there are three different leagues or there are three different ecosystems in China? It's because not like what we have in the West where everything is connected. Um, in China, if you are in the system of Alibaba, it's very difficult for you to reach out to anything in Tencent. So just to give you one quick example, everything that you published in um, WeChat is not searchable in Baidu. So that's why multi-channel and multimedia is very, very essential when it comes to uh, doing uh, digital in China, especially when it comes to not just the B2C, also B2B as well. So in a nutshell, Chinese digital world is highly fragmented um, and people uh, district distribute their time very dynamically across different channels. And also China is really strong on mobile. 70% of the time and the digital online search is actually now happening on mobile only. So it's very important to understand when you do digital with China and in China, um, you have a very strong um, mobile strategy. So on the right hand side, it is a chart to show how fragmented and how different um, time is distributed in China. So on, on the horizontal line, it's a monthly active user, and on the vertical line, it's the accumulated MOU, uh, MAU growth, so monthly active user growth. Um, and the bigger the bubble is, the longer um, the time spent on different um, platforms and media forms. So um, as you can see, social and video and also um, uh, community are still very strong. But the one that is currently growing really fast is short video um, and gaming sector. So that's how uh, people distribute their currently their times. Um, why is this also relevant to the B2B marketeers? It's because when we think about B2B marketing, um, I would like to call them human to human marketing instead of to separate them into B2B or B2C. You have to bear in mind that you, the person, the target audience that you are talking to is living in this type of digital world where they um, distribute their time really fragmentedly and they, they are very impatient. They only give you 10 seconds before they move on to anything new. Um, and it's very important to grab their attention at the first instance as, as fast as you can. So um, now I'm going to talk more about how B2B marketing is in China. Um, there, there are four different things that I would like to mention um, compared to what we have here in B2B marketing. So the first thing is the line between B2B marketing and B2C marketing in China is coming to the end. Why is that so? It, this is also related to the Chinese culture as well. Um, if you are familiar with Chinese culture, when you do business with China, uh, with Chinese people, it's very important that you establish some kind of personal relationship with them first. So it's very important that as a B2B marketeer, when you talk to your target audience, you're not just thinking them as the sales manager, as the uh, procurement team, as the CEO, as the uh, MD of, of, of the company. You have to think them 
um, as different individuals? How would they like to do um, in their um, personal life? What are they interested in? And those might be the moments that you can cut through compared to your competitors. One um, example is from BMW. Um, as you know, this is BMW can can be a B2C brand, but sometimes it's also a B2B brand because it's also, it also sells cars to big companies. What they do differently is um, they actually host clubs um, and they, they recruit those um, high value buyers into those clubs and actually get um, make gatherings um, in the offline event and also communicate them even about how to raise their children. So that's how a B2B brand try to tap into a B2C world uh, by using a very smart way. Um, the second thing is, in China, people and teams are quite impatient about building brands. So it's uh, very important that you, when you do your B2B marketing in China, you separate your budget into two baskets. One is purely about lead generation, about how quick that you can turn around. And another important thing that you still need to do in China is about building your brand. Why is it very important? It's because Chinese people um, are highly suspicious about new brands so it's very important that you build your brand when you uh, distribute your marketing budget it's not about just the instant conversion it's also about build your brand in a long-term way so um, giving enough what we call ganhuo or meat content to make sure that you are not just using it as a quick uh, bait but also using it as a proper branding tool and the third one is the PR, uh, PR versus content marketing. Traditionally, when um, we are talking about less about digital marketing, both B2B and B2C world, um, PR is really, really important in China, especially in B2B marketing world, um, because PR plays a vital role um, and reputation plays a vital role in Chinese B2B world. Um, and this is why PR is deemed um, as very important as it is um, in Chinese market. But currently, uh, the things things start to change now um, because more and more so, the uh, millennials are becoming the, the decision makers in the Chinese biggest companies. Um, that's why they before they reach to, before they can um, actually talk to you, they search for you, they look for your content. So that's why content marketing is becoming more and more important. But PR also plays a vital role also in digital marketing but in a different way i will talk about it later and the last one is um, in, in the West, email marketing is very, very important. Um, I know companies who spend almost 50% of, of their budget in email marketing um, here. I'm not saying that it's not working in China, but it's definitely less effective compared to WeChat marketing. Um, this is also applied to both personal um, life and also business world. So WeChat is becoming the tool that people use both for their personal life and business life as well. So it's actually more efficient and effective to reach people um, through WeChat official account rather than using email database. So this is just to give you a heads up about how different China B2B marketing is compared to what it is here in the West. The next one is I would like to introduce a fish pond theory, uh, which is quite popular currently in China digital B2B marketing world. So how this works, how this works is that you create great content as bait and those contents you cast the net to cover different channels. So if you remember that China, uh, China uh, digital world are separated into three key leagues. So make sure that when you cast the bait, cast the net, cast the net and you make sure you cover all the possible different channels so that you can reach to the single fish um, different for multiple times. And when we say fish, we say it actually means different customers or potential leads. Then what we need to do is put the fish in your pond. Um, why is it very important? The pond um, can act as a channel where you uh, gather all your leads together. So here we use email database um, to make sure that we actually have those people who follow us all the time and then we communicate with our newsletters. In China, it's a little bit different. Um, a lot of companies use their WeChat official account at the fish pond. So um, it won't be as simple as what we have here as, as you 
have a database um, and then you can exactly know who they are and how to reach them. But on WeChat official channel, um, it actually is very effective because it can connect to emails, it can connect to mobile phones, it can connect to the, their personal um, contacts. Um, and some other companies use their website as a fish pond. Um, if your website has a registration function, um, that's actually the first hand information that you get you can get. So after you've put the fish, so the potential leads in your fish pond, then what you need to do is to rate your fish and tailor your sales solutions. So for the big fishes, meaning for the companies or for, for the leads that you can immediately convert, uh, as a marketing team, you can pass on to your sales team directly for them to convert. For the small fish that you think that can become larger clients in one day, what you need to do is to nurture them using their great content um, and from different multiple layers of content as well. And for the fish that you think um, it's a miscatch, so basically you put them wrongly in your fish pond, you have to have a churn out plan to make sure that you um, don't communicate to them um, not very effective, effectively. So using this theory, um, where it leads to is the first step that you have to create great content, not only um, for the for the for the purpose of you know using as bait, but also to make sure that you nurture your your leads using great content. So as Seth Golding, which is like which, who is the marketing guru, said, content marketing is the only marketing left, and it's more and more so when it comes to the digital world. As I mentioned, that also in China, um, more and more people actually um, use the content to judge if you are a reputable business, if you are a reliable business before they contact you. So study shows that 57% uh, complete of the process before the customers first contact with suppliers. So it's very important that you capture them before that 50% 57% has completed. So you have to cast your content across the internet, across different channels. And where do they get the information? Where do they search? Where do they find the information? So this is the chart um, to show that where people get information. So this is not just business to business, but people in general. So in both, across both their personal life and their business lives. So um, they use, as I said, as I mentioned, three different formats. One is search, the second one is community, and third one is short video. And uh, luckily, it's the same across different tiers of the cities. So tier one, tier two, and tier three to tier five cities all use similar tools to do search and to get the information. Um, there are three very important ones that I would like to um, emphasize here. The first one is Baidu search, which is the equivalent of Google, um, which is still the most single important tool for people to get information, um, especially when it comes to B2B. And also um, WeChat is becoming more and more important in search as well. So a lot of people do search in WeChat now. I will introduce you later. And the other very important tool, which is very suitable for um, B2B channel, is called Zhihu, which is the equivalent of Quora um, as what we have here. Um, so these are the three platforms that, um, that you have to bear in mind when you do B2B marketing in China. And this is to show you what content are they interested in. Um, people are interested in different types of content in different stages in their decision-making process. This is uh, specifically to B2B. So when you say it in the early stage, awareness stage, articles here, um, it means blogs and also WeChat articles is the most important thing that they gather information from you and also uh, your website and sometimes video helps as well. When uh, they have the interest to contact you already, your webinars and the web paper becoming more and more important. In the late stage, in the decision-making stage, they need to benchmark your case studies and also they will, will want to meet you in person when it happens to make, uh, as in when they need to make decisions. 
and how they want to be communicated. So um, the blue bar shows the most favored way and the um, red bar shows the least favored way. So uh, Chinese people don't like to receive cold call marketing, so you can create that directly. Uh, what is more and more important as what we have here as in email, as I mentioned in China, we have WeChat. WeChat is becoming more and more important tool um, for companies to receive messages, to be communicated. They feel less offensive and they feel um, more comfortable when they communicate via WeChat. And as you can see here, not just online, offline-wise, conferencing and ex exhibitions are also important in China. One thing um, I would like to point out here, um, networking. Um, what we have in China, as in networking, um, is more um, visual way of doing it, which is happening on WeChat. The traditional networking event where people uh, gather around and only talking to people um, is less preferred in China. We are becoming more and more um, comfortable with it, but still, if we have a choice, we, we, we would rather go to a conference, going to exhibitions, and uh, being connected via uh, websites and also via WeChat. Um, so, but um, after we know where to go, what to um, what to what to talk about, what types, but where to start in a very complex Chinese digital world. Um, I would, my basic suggestions is to fish where the fish are. So getting the basics right. The first thing that you need to have is localized products and the content. I'm not just talking about a Chinese website which you translate everything in Chinese, um, but also about really localize your content. Just use website as an example. A lot of websites in the West, is the navigation of it is designed a vertical way. However, in China, uh, because of different reading behavior, because of the culture difference, a lot of websites are designed in a horizontal way in terms of um, navigation. So that's just one small example of how different it can be when it comes to content localization. And the second thing is, as I mentioned, um, in the fish pumps theory, what we need to have is a fish pond. So a lot of people use WeChat and Weibo official account as a fish pond. And also you need to do Baidu SEO and SEM plan. Also, as I mentioned, Juhu account is also very important. And traditionally, as what we have here, LinkedIn account is also very important when you do B2B marketing, digital marketing in China. Um, and specifically, I'm going to talk about WeChat and Juhu today. So the first step that you need to do is to set up your official account. There are two different types of official accounts in WeChat. One is called a service account, and the, the other one is called subscription account. If you only have a license here in the UK, and which means that you don't um, have a registration number in China, what you can open is the service account. So the difference between the service account and sub sub subscription account are, um, firstly, service account appears, as you can see on the left-hand side, in the chat in the chat history flow directly where subscription accounts will be uh, will be uh, put in a folder called subscription accounts folder. So service account is more visible to and it can appear normally or naturally in the chat flow. The difference and the other difference is for subscription account, you can publish one article per day. But for service account, you can only publish one article per week. So that means if you are really, really content driven, you should think of a um, possibility of registering your business in China and then open a subscription account. If not, you are not that content driven. Um, and once a week, so four times per month is good enough for you. I like suggest that we go for the self service account which is also open as you know the overseas account um, and is available for you to subscribe and also for you to open um, and as I mentioned, WeChat had recently launched, not recently, actually in 2017, the search function um, in WeChat flow. And it's becoming more and more important now in people's daily life. A lot of people do search in WeChat naturally. And the other thing is, it's not just you can, when you search on WeChat, it's not just a search on WeChat platform. It also searches on Jingdong, it also searches on Juhu, which is also a very important um, important tool um, when you when you start to do B2B marketing. 
And the other thing is a very um, special networking um, thing in China, which is WeChat groups. Um, WeChat groups are like WhatsApp groups, but in China we have millions of groups, more than 100 people. So not everyone know each other. Um, the reasons for them to join a group chat of more than 100 people, apart from their corporate internal communications, is professional networking. So um, when you go to an event, when you go to a conference, when you go to your Chinese professional contact, ask them, are they in a group that, you know, professionally connected with the experts in that industry? what you can do is to ask to join those groups so those are the target audiences are those are where you know the fish are and um, so when you go into your you go into that group you can talk to them you can pub, pub, publish your advertisement and you can even hire people so on the right hand side is group which I mean it's called Brit Britain British entrepreneurs in Beijing and you can see the lady here is actually recruiting a, pub, a published PR expert in China um, the last point on WeChat is WeChat is currently doing um, promoting mini programs. Essentially, it's an app that you can open in WeChat directly without downloading them. Um, there are more than one million mini pro programs um, in the end of 2018, and there are more than 400 million users. Um, and people spend longer and longer time on WeChat um, mini programs. And um, this is just one example how WeChat mini group program can help your marketing and sales. Um, so what you can do is that you can design a WeChat mini program, a mini program which includes business cards, which include your webinars, events and activities, and also your content and case studies, which you can pass around very easily within WeChat to your WeChat contacts. Um, and the second um, platform that I would like to introduce today is Zhihu. So Zhihu is the platform for professionals in China. It has high user profile. 80% of users hold a bachelor degree or above, and 76% of users have high income. And they have a really clear objective when they go to Zhihu. So 66% users are using Zhihu to search and ask questions relevant to their professional those. So when you when they ask questions, a lot of people will answer those questions, and the ones which get the most um, likes, which gets the most uh, comments, will rank on top. So it works as simple as that. And also, it's a great content driver. Um, there are, in 2016, there were 6 million questions and 23 million answers in 2016. And it has high authority on search engines. It's searchable not only on Baidu, but also on Richard, as I mentioned. Also, when you do marketing on Zhihu, the good thing is, um, not like WeChat, when you do a WeChat campaign, it can only last 48 to 70 hours. On Zhihu, um, it's, it's an accumulative process. The answer that you put in can be accumulated, um, and, and um, when people click on your name, they can see all the answers that you answered before, and you can see, they can see all the um, articles and columns that you published before. So this is more actually an organic way to accumulate your fans and your followers. And also, this is the platform for B2B KOL, so key opinion leader in China. As I mentioned, PR, or uh, build your reputation, finding the leader in your industry, is very important um, in China especially when it comes to B2B marketing. And Zhihu is now becoming the platform for B2B key opinion leaders. So on the right-hand side, you will see the um, account owner um, called Pony Ma, um, and he's the Tencent um, CEO and you know one of the most richest men um, in China. And this is his personal account. And he asked actually two questions. The first question is about um, in in the future, in the in the next ten years, what um, what science technologies will influence the um, internet industry. And as you can see here, it has already 3,400 answers. So think, thinking of the possibility um, of how possible that your brand is connected to this type of KOLs when it comes to doing business um, with China, when it comes to doing B2B marketing with China, and how powerful it can be. Um, so this is called Zhihu Topic, 
and this is when I searched arm. As you can see here, um, on the right hand side, you can see how many followers um, on, on, under this topic and how many questions were there. Um, the, the, and also you can see the discussions and people like literally mentioned the company name and people literally are keen, are keen to talk to the uh, talk to the uh, brand team and also they are actually naturally talking about the technologies that this company holds um, so if i were the brand manager of the brand i would rush into a jifu and answer all those questions and um, this is a great example of IBM. Um, that's what they do using their official account on Zhihu. So as you can see here, they uh, not only answer questions, they also post videos, post links, and also they uh, hold live um, show or webinars on Zhihu as well. So this is a great example of using Zhihu as not just a marketing tool, but also as a tool to build uh, both brands and generate leads as well. And um, for example, what if I were you, what I would do today, I would go to Zhihu and search for the keywords of my industry. So this is when I searched biology. As you can see here, there are 5 million followers and there are 38 uh, sorry, 380,000 questions um, to be asked. And also, um, if just, just answer two top three or top four of them to start with, and let's see how it does to your, to, to your reputation in China. Okay, um, that's all for me for today. Thank you very much, Zhao. I hope the presentation was very helpful for understanding the Chinese uh, B2B market uh, landscape. And before we take questions, I'd like to tell you a bit more about how Crayfish can help you with your business in, in China. Uh, we are a full service firm uh, where we can help you with strategy and going support, planning your journey to China and supporting you all the way with the operational aspects, whether it's translating your brochure or putting on the Chinese video subtitles to finding the right investors as well as uh, people in China. So if you have any of those inquiries, do feel free to contact us. Specifically on the marketing, digital marketing, we have varied level of support to you to suit your budget. And it can be a very small piece of work like setting up um, a WeChat account to more sophisticated ongoing marketing campaigns and design project. So that is uh, from us uh, on Crayfish. And now we would uh, like to uh, take questions. And also notice, please, uh, there's uh, also upcoming uh, webinars you can access on our website and register. The next one is actually uh, next week. And uh, it's um, further understanding in detail, understanding WeChat. And uh, then we have a very practical session later in April about setting up uh, the company and making business plan. So, um, so the question is time now. Right, got the first question coming through. Should companies manufacturing and distributing industry goods invest in digital marketing activities in general and especially in the Chinese market? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, I often got asked these type of questions, like if we were a very niche market, if we were a uh, like very industrial-led, should we invest in digital marketing? Um, the answer is definitely yes. The reasons, as I just mentioned, that I would prefer to think this more and more as a B2B um, marketing opportunity, instead of B2B marketing opportunity, as in human-to-human -human opportunity. Um, and the good thing about being a niche brand is as I said the KOLs or the basically the um, key account medias are very limited and very targeted so as long as you can find those people who you can work with together and you can reach out to your target audience the content marketing in B2B digital marketing is always worthwhile doing and it, it can always help you uh, to achieve what you want um, especially when it comes to not just converting needs but especially when it comes to building brands 
Okay, the second question, what hurdles do B2B companies have to overcome if they want to start digital marketing activities in China to reach their target group? Uh, that's also a very good question. Um, I would think of actually three hurdles. The first one is the culture difference. Um, as I mentioned, um, in China, when you do B2B marketing, um, it's more like B2B combined with B2C marketing. It's always relationship first, so people would like to build a trust with the brand first, then they start to do business with you. Um, so it's not just talking about how great your product is, it's also about how you can connect to them as a person, as individuals. Um, and we also uh, did, I think the the culture webinar before um, and for those who are interested you can go to our um, webinar page and and try to look for the uh, culture link a culture webinar link then you can uh, have a go with with that one to see if that helps and the second hurdle I would, look, I would like to see is although digital marketing is becoming more and more important in China nothing beats face-to-face -face, uh, meeting and face-to-face um, conference. So basically, conference and you know the exhibitions are also playing very key role when it comes to do B two B marketing in China. I would like to say that you should do both online and offline um, together. So you can't just uh, sitting here and thinking about you know I only do online digital marketing and my brand will uh, take off in China. Um, it couldn't work like being that way. You have to be there. You have to talk to people. You have to talk to your leads. Um, and the third thing is, um, it's sometimes it's difficult for us to understand um, how big the influence is for Alibaba and WeChat and Tencent and Baidu um, as what we are doing here. So uh, what I would suggest is that basically um, we have to understand how powerful the tools are and also how important that to work across different platforms and having different target audiences and when we talk to different, uh, sorry, when we talk to different audiences.